Good evening, everyone. My name is Evan Stankovic, adult programming librarian at the Northside Library. And on behalf of the Jefferson Madison Regional Library, we welcome you to the virtual program, Finding Your Writing Community. Thank you so much for joining this, e this evening and please do remember to visit jmrl.org for a complete and frequently updated schedule of upcoming virtual and in-person events for all ages. This event and all JMRL events may be, may have been made possible by the incredible and generous support of the Friends of the Library. This program is being recorded for inclusion on JMRL's YouTube channel, so barring any technical issues, uh, we hope to have it posted within the next couple of days. As a courtesy to this evening's presenters, mics have been muted. At the end of the program, there will be a designated time for questions and answers. Please type any questions into the chat box or the Q&A box. And at the end of the presentation, we will attempt to address as many as possible. Additionally, the closed caption transcript has been enabled for this evening's program. You can activate this feature by selecting live transcript at the bottom of your screen and uh, show subtitles. Please note, despite the prompt you might receive, the transcription cannot be saved or downloaded. Uh, and also the transcription is by no means flawless. And with that said, it is now my pleasure to introduce tonight's three presenters who we were fortunate to have with us here a few months ago, I think it was back in mid-summer, uh, for a program entitled Get Published. We have Jocelyn Nicole Johnson, who is the author of My Monticello, a fiction debut that was called Electrifying by Colson Whitehead, A Masterly Feat by the New York Times, Extraordinary by the Washington Post, and I could go on and on. Her short story, Control Negro, was anthologized in the Best American Short Stories of 2018, guest edited by Roxanne Gay, who described it as one hell of a story, and it had the distinction of being read live by LeVar Burton. A veteran public school art teacher, Jocelyn lives and writes in Charlottesville, Virginia. Welcome, Jocelyn. Catherine Shellman. Catherine Shellman is the author of the Lily Adler Mysteries and the forthcoming Nightingale Mysteries. Her debut novel, novel, The Body in the Garden, was one of Suspense Magazine's best books of 2020 and led to her being named one of Book Page's 16 Women to Watch in 2020. Her second novel, Silence in the Library, was praised as worthy of Rex Stout or Agatha Christie by Library Journal. Catherine lives and writes in the mountains of Virginia. Welcome, Catherine. Hi, everyone. Shannon McLeod is the author of the novella Whimsy and the essay chapbook Pathetic. Her writing has appeared in Tin House Online, Wigleaf, Hobart, Joyland Magazine, Cosmonauts Avenue, Prairie Schooner, among many other publications. She teaches high school English in Virginia. Welcome, Shannon. Thanks. And a big thank you to each of you for being here this evening. Uh, this is very exciting. Uh, thank you for sharing your experiences and your expertise with us. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to you all, and I will stop sharing my screen. And it's all yours. All right. Well, I'm going to... Uh, just on behalf of all three of us, welcome everybody. Thanks so, so much for joining us. It's really fun to be able to see Shannon and Catherine again here online. Um, so tonight we're thinking about the idea of community, but really quickly, basically we're going to have four sections and then a big, hopefully, chunk of time at the end for Q&A. So if you have questions, please be sure to go ahead and put them as you have them in the Q&A box or in the chat box and we'll, we'll address those at the end. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, why community? Why do you want to cultivate a writer community? What are some of the kind of communities out there that you might um, be able to take advantage of? And um, also how you can create or what kinds of com communities you might create for yourself that you might, um, if you can't find exactly what you need. Um, so I'm going to start really briefly with just talking about this idea of a case for community. So writing is essentially a solitary act. But all three of us have talked about this idea that community can be really essential and really helpful in your writing practice at certain times. Um, for example, if you're in a, a writing workshop, a supportive writing workshop, a group of people that meet over time, not only can they really help you improve your writing by reflecting back to you what you've done, but also um, they can help you motivate because you have this audience, this like every month and you know every third month it's your turn to try to contribute something and they can share resources with you. Um, this is a good editor, this might be a good thing to send here or this feels ready for this and really be a support to you. Um, so I'm gonna, Shannon and Catherine, is there anything else you wanna add on that idea of just this case for community? Uh, go ahead, Shannon. Yeah, for me, writing communities really affirm my identity as a writer. 
uh, without connecting to other writers, I often fall into this negative self-talk where I'm like, why am I wasting my time trying to do this? And um, so other people help me push back against that sort of insecurity and negativity. Um, and when I'm alone, I lose purpose and passion sometimes uh, with the writing. So community is a really important part of the process for me. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that, Shannon. I have those moments all the time too. Um, and I think no matter, those happen no matter where you are in your publishing career um, or your writing, your writing journey, I guess, whether you're planning to publish or not. Um, and no matter where you are in that journey, everyone needs critique and feedback and editing. And, um, you know, whether you, whether you want to get ready to publish, you need feedback before you start soliciting, um, the, sorry, you start querying agents. If you don't want to publish, you, you, you're just trying to grow as a writer, you still need feedback to do that. So having a community and writers that you can turn to to get that feedback is really essential. Um, and if you do plan to publish once you've started that, that part of the journey, um, a community is one of the best ways to support that career. Writers are a lot of the best readers out there. They are so enthusiastic about other people's books and other people's work. And having other writers that you've gotten to know and that you've formed a community with is really one of the best ways to, um, to really get, get support for your, your work. Um, they will talk about your books, they will buy them, they will recommend them to their friends, they will post them on your social media. So it's really, it's a very affirming thing and it's, it's something that we all do for each other. Um, and I think that's a really essential part of the publishing career. Otherwise you just feel like you're shouting into the void as you're trying to get your stuff out there. Yeah, I love that both of uh, what both of you said and Catherine, you made me think that being part of a community also can be really helpful, not just because you're getting things from people, but because you're able to provide things for other people. So reading other people's work helps you not only, first of all, it's just good and it's fun and it's a good thing to do, but it also actually helps you to become a better writer because you understand the experience of giving feedback as well. And you, you know, I just, being a debut author, I realize now that all the people that have been part of writing communities are now potentially um, cheerleaders for the book, our audience for the book are, you know, because they've been part of the process way before the intention was to have it be a published book. So kind of, you're always building that and it's really good. Um, so we're gonna, are we all good on that particular bullet, that case for community? Go community. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, so Shannon's gonna um, lead talking a little bit about just some of the different kinds of communities that are out there that you might consider. Okay, thanks Jocelyn. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to writing communities. And of course, now we're all familiar with in-person versus virtual. Having things like Zoom has opened up a lot of new opportunities for community and connecting with other writers. Um, but there's also different communities based upon different aspects of the writing process. So I'm gonna go over some basics of that. Um, so first off, there's generative writing groups and that's where people get together to write. And often there's a prompt theme or genre that'll focus the production of writing. Um, but it helps to just sit and write with other people. Again, going back to the, just you're not doing it alone because otherwise it's a really solitary process. Um, a lot of writers and aspiring writers I talk to just have difficulty making that time. So generative groups are a bit like peer pressure, kind of like what Jocelyn was mentioning in the introduction. Uh, you make a pact with your community to be there and support each other to get that writing done. So those can be really helpful just to build the habit of being a writer, because I know a lot of people want to be a writer, but building the habit, just like any habit, of course, um, into your life is like a big first step. Um, next, critique groups, which Catherine mentioned, uh, that's where you share your work for feedback. And that's really helpful when you're interested in writing for an audience or just growing, which you mentioned before. Uh, so you can see how your work lands with others. So you might get a wildly different interpretation of your writing than you intended or you thought would come across. So that's, of course, really important to get that outside perspective um, to make sure you're communicating what you mean to, of course. And these groups, they require trust and mutual respect in order to be fruitful. Otherwise, you know, I've probably a lot of us have heard or maybe experienced like 
not so great workshop experiences. So I think building those critique groups with others um, is even more helpful than just critiquing with existing groups. Um, it can be tough to find, you know, if you are looking for um, writers with whom to build a critique group, seek out those whose writing you admire, um, and then, you know, trying to figure out whose personality is matched together and what sort of feedback you want to give and receive. Um, but, you know, sometimes different perspectives are helpful too. And one local opportunity is the JMRL Critique Circle. Uh, that's run by Chris Register through meetup.com. If anybody who hasn't participated who's local is interested, that's a really fun opportunity and I've gotten helpful feedback through that group before. Uh, there's a mix of regular, so it is building up that trust and then some people who just join sporadically and that's actually how I met Catherine. And then uh, the third that I wanted to share about is performance communities. So things like reading series and open mics. Um, reading series are usually featuring established writers and open mics offer, offer performance opportunities to any attendees. Um, some events meld the two together. So for local folks, we do have a lot of readings at New Dominion Bookshop. Um, and UVA's creative writing program brings in some really great writers. And we also have a great open mic regularly at The Bridge and at Rapunzel's Bookstore in Livingston. Um, so, and of course there are a lot of really great virtual readings. So it's like pretty much any, every day you can find a virtual reading. Um, and I'm not sure if Catherine or Jocelyn wanted to mention any uh, certain bookstores that are really good with virtual writing, um, readings. I know that uh, for me, Literati Bookstore out of Michigan has really great virtual re readings too. So maybe we could pop that in the chat or mention. I just have a qu question um, about the performance communities, Shannon, and your experience with that. Do you find that you ever, um, if you're going through things, especially in person or local, that you see people or that you actually create relationship? Because I guess I've done those things, but I I don't know if I've taken it to the next step and now I'm thinking of it in this different way, <laughs> like where, you know yeah. what I mean? That's another opportunity to create relationship. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, people who uh, like speaking of building that critique, like you, it's hard to know what somebody else's writing is like. Um, so open mics are a really great opportunity for you to find other writers uh, with whom you click. And so I've done open mics where, you know, I find writers who we trade compliments we admire each other's writing and maybe I'll give them a chat book or a book and um so I have built some relationships that way and just seeing like regular faces as part of the local writing community there's some overlap of like regulars at the bridge and regulars at the critique circle too so yeah it definitely has been fruitful for me and um I would I would add there's in terms of types of community there's also um they sort of come at different levels. I think of it sort of like three levels. There's the really personal ones where you have these one-on-one -on -one relationships with like a critique partner or a beta reader that you swap work with. Um, there's sort of the mid-sized ones where this is like your, your writing group of anywhere from three to 10 people that you meet with pretty regularly or you know, whenever you can in your lives. Um, and then there's also the really, the wider community that you can tap into um, at like workshops or uh, conferences, or even through social media. So sort of whatever size of, of community you're looking to build, there's ways to do that. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna try and touch on all the ways that we have done all those different levels of community ourselves and resources for helping you do that too. Yeah. And I'm gonna jump in and say one more thing because you made me think of this, Catherine, is it's also like the duration of time can be really different. So. You can go to a workshop where over a week you trade with 12 people, you have a teacher that's leading the workshop and you're reading everyone's work or over, you know, over a week or over six months, depending on how it's paced, you know, um, or you can have a group. I've had a group that I've been in for 10 years. So we've been meeting roughly once a month for 10 years and it's a much smaller group. Um, so you know, that is a really interesting thing to think about too. You can have like a really short, intense community with people. Some of the people I've gone to workshops, taken a workshop with, I've absolutely kept up with. You know, there's often one or two people that you just kind of really mesh with and you'll text with them and talk with them and even trade stories with them afterwards. So 
both thinking about the size and also the duration. And that can really reflect what you need in your life and what you're able to do, depending on your schedule and your, your other needs. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Thanks. So now Jocelyn's going to tell us a bit about the benefits of tapping into existing communities. So, yeah, so we were both, we were all thinking about the idea that there are, um, you know, quite a few communities or a long, really a lot, a lot of communities that already exist. So one thing is um, just trying to find out about what's available to you. And we'll actually put some links in the chat to things that we've kind of collected as just a starting point um, and, and becoming part of those communities and, um, and, you know, signing up, trying it, figuring out what works for you. So I think we're each going to just talk about a couple ways that a couple communities that we've been a part of that we've that have either led to interesting things that have been useful to us. Um, and I had two that I wanted to talk about. The first was Writer House, which is a um, local writing community here in Charlottesville. It's kind of right behind uh, Bodo's if you all live here. Uh, and they have not only do they have shorter workshops and like day long workshops, which I've taken advantage of, they also have longer, even like a year long novel writing workshop. They have um, different writers come in. Um, and I was really highly involved in that. In the first couple of years it was there, I even got to interview some writers that I still admire today. I got to interview Danielle Evans there. I met Tayeri Jones before she wrote An American Wedding there. Um, and a bunch of other really interesting and really great writers. So it's a, a really nice community to be a part of. For me, I took a workshop there with a local writer and she ended up making a writer group um, by pulling a few students and people that she liked and friends. And that's the group that I've been in for 10 years, um, which you know started by just participating in this kind of short-term class. So whenever you're putting yourself out there, whenever you're putting yourself into uh, communion with other people, you never know what relationships will be there. Um, so I really do recommend that. And that long time writing group has been so helpful to me because um, you know, there were people in there with MFAs, there were people in there that just read really differently than me. It's a small group, but within us, we contained all these multitudes of talents and things. And so really helpful, even with the story that I ended up getting published in Guernica, they were like, this would be perfect for Guernica. I would have never ever known that would be a great place for it. And it came through that group. Um, another interesting one Austin, that I wanted to- I'm so sorry yes. to interrupt. Um, we had a quick question. Did the Writer House move? It did, but it just moved to the other side of the same building. Okay. So it was in the front building behind Bodo's and it's actually on the other side of that same building. Like if you went around the parking lot to the other side of that building. Okay. Thank you. So they're still there. Um, the last one that I wanted to talk about was a kind of a more, um, a little bit, uh, I went to a workshop that was further away that was more expensive. <laughs> I went to 10 house workshops um, many, many years ago. But what I what was interesting about doing that was, first of all, there's this idea of trying for things, right? So I was trying for something that I might not get into. And there can be a real interest when you're just putting yourself out there in that way, because it kind of helps you posh and think about what you're doing. At any rate, um, this has to do with that performative piece that Shannon was mentioning. Whenever I go to any workshop at any level, it's really, really nice to share work and read aloud. Often there's an opportunity for participants to read aloud and it's usually optional. And when I went to Ten House that very first time, I actually read a story aloud and I was like, my heart was beating and I was like really nervous. And, it, you know, you know, there were just other students there, but some of the teachers that were writers there and so forth. And that was actually how I ended up getting my first agent because there was someone at the workshop that was scouting for an agent. I got my first agent. I did not sell that book, but the nice thing is the person who scouted me is still a friend of mine who's because been an editor. She went to a different agency. Like, so I've kept through all my writing journey. I've kept the relationship with her. And so again, you never know what relationships you're building. It's just nice to keep an open mind and kind of put yourself out there. Um, would someone else like to talk about some experiences they've had being uh, with existing communities? Sure. Um, Shannon had mentioned uh, the meetup group, the um, writer circle here in Charlottesville, and that's where she and I first met. 
Um, I've met a bunch of other writers there too. And it's, it's very interesting. You can either, um, you know, you give, you have a chance every time you're there, you have a chance to give feedback to other people. And when you present, then you have a chance to receive feedback. So just that balance of getting to experience both sides of things in a very big group where people are bringing all different kinds of work. Um, I found really helpful because you just see so many different types of writing and then just having the chance then to, um, to tap into that group that's already there and to meet people one-on-one -on -one and form those more um, individual relationships. It's also really valuable. Um, I've also done online matchups and critique swaps where you uh, get paired with other writers who are looking for someone to critique with. A lot of those are run through social media. When I first started doing them, they were done through blogs, but that's not so much a thing <laughs> anymore. Um, but I'd also like to add a lot of the kinds of community we're talking about involve sharing your work, either with a critique partner or with a, in a performance aspect or in a workshop. Um, but there's also things like conferences, which I personally love because you can meet a bunch of people, but the pressure isn't on you to necessarily say, here's something I've written. I need your feedback on it now. You're you're going to panels and you're learning about different aspects of writing or depending on the type of workshop. Um, one of my favorites uh, that I've gone to, that I I wasn't able to go to this year. Um, it was done virtually, but that I love doing when it's in person was the Historical Novel Society um, because you get information about writing, but then you also just have a chance to go learn about different periods in history from people who are writing about those periods or who are experts in elements of them. And that can really enrich your writing life and your community, but also just your your breadth of knowledge and your interest. And you meet other people who have similar interests without that, that pressure of, and now you're gonna give me feedback on my work right away, <laughs> which can be really intimidating in some settings. So I also really recommend conferences as a, as a way to sort of tap into an existing community. I'm really looking forward to when they come back in person though, because it's not quite the same virtually. <laughs> Yeah, and my, my first experience with tapping into an existing community would be with NaNoWriMo. If you're not familiar, that's National Novel Writing Month. Uh, I wrote my first novel through NaNoWriMo, unpublished. It was a, it was a practice novel, that was 10 years ago. But uh, it's super fun, a really supportive community, and it starts really soon. It's November is National Novel Writing Month. Um, so if you go to their website, I believe it's nanowrimo.org and uh, Evan's just putting in that, that in the chat there. Uh, it's a really good time for you to tap into that writing community. It's super supportive and friendly. And um, there is that website in which you can connect with people all over the world, but there are also local communities. So there is a Charlottesville NaNoWriMo community. And thanks Angela Knight for telling me about NaNoWriMo. I see you're here, hi. If you do NaNoWriMo this year, you can also, if you're on social media at all, if you hashtag anything NaNoWriMo, you will have so many people chiming in and supporting you and encouraging you. It's a, it's a very international event, actually, and you can get connected with people from all over the world doing that, which I think is really cool. Can I really quickly ask, how does that work? <laughs> I actually don't know how it works. Like, how are you encouraging one another in that particular community? Shannon, do you want to take that or do you want me to? Sure. It's been a while since I've done it. So correct me if I misspeak or Angela can correct us, <laughs> Catherine. Uh, but you get put into these groups. So you can either create your own online groups or you can choose to be put into them. Um, there's NaNoWriMo in November and there's also a summer one called Camp NaNoWriMo. I just remember that the summer ones you're put in these different, like they call them cabins. Um, so you can see, you, you track your progress on this website. So there is sort of that peer pressure, even if it's people you don't know. Um, you know, of course you get that like immediate rush of dopamine getting to see your progress when you add in more words each day. Um, but there's message boards, there are like, daily pep talks that are sent out um, and on their website. Um, so there's opportunities to connect with other people and um, ask and answer questions and just see what other people are writing and what their progress and process is like. So it's pretty neat. I haven't done it in a while, so it's possible things have changed. So Catherine, anything I left out or misspoke on? I've done it too, but I think I think the structure is still basically the same. Um, and in case anyone doesn't know, so the goal of NaNoWriMo is to write 50,000 words of a novel 
over the course of November. And so I think that works out to about 1,667 words a day or so. So you're trying to hit that word count every day. And that's where the peer pressure comes in because it's a, it's a set word count and everyone's trying to do the same thing. Um, some days you'll write less, some days you may write more, but the, the goal is to have those 50,000 words by the end of the day or by the end of the month. All right, so we move to creating the community you need. Yes, I think Shannon has a lot to say about this one. She's um, really good yeah, I've kind of done this um, in a few different forums. So in 2017, I moved from Ann Arbor to Charlottesville. So in Ann Arbor, I had kind of built a writing community already. So I felt like I sort of had to scrap, uh, start from scratch just a few years ago. So I joined Meetup, I immediately saw the JMRL critique circle and was really excited about that. So I started um, attending that pretty soon after I moved here. Um, but then I also found that I wanted a smaller, more regular critique group, kind of like Jocelyn was mentioning, just like a smaller group that's more consistent so you really get to know each other um, and build that bond. Uh, so after um, meeting a couple prose writers in Charlottesville, since I write prose, I created a smaller critique group um, with Catherine and a few others. This was before I met Jocelyn, so no, no, <laughs> no offense to that. Um, and so we would get together once a month and um, uh, I believe a week before, you know, we'd email each other our work and then get together to kind of break down our comments for each other. So that was a really nice sense of community and building up those writing relationships. Um, I also, like Catherine, I swap writing with others regularly just online over email. Over the years, I've reached out to writers whose work I admired. I, I'm, I've been shameless here and there, like on Twitter, when I find a writer who I feel like um, is around the same stage in their career, whose writing I really like, who I think I would jive with. Sometimes I'll just reach out and be like, hey, I really love your writing. And then um, sometimes I'll ask them to share critique. So I've made some really great friends and um, beta readers that I've built up relationships with um, through online uh, sources like Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, then when the pandemic hit, uh, the group that we were meeting with uh, in person in Charlottesville, of course, couldn't meet in person anymore. Uh, but I still wanted a sense of community. Of course, we we were all craving it and probably still are. Um, so that group could no longer meet, but I wanted to have some sort of consistent writing community still. And of course, missed my writer friends in Michigan. So once the general public kind of became more familiar with Zoom and able to use Zoom, I started a weekly Zoom writing group that was generative. So members would rotate and who presents a prompt and then we'd write for half an hour and then share out over Zoom. And that was really helpful. Um, so if you're looking to start something like that, especially if you're like, I really like to write, but I, um, I don't know what to write or I don't know when I'm gonna have time that's something that I really recommend since Zoom and other platforms like Google Meet like that are definitely more accessible to most folks these days. Um, and then with the performative communities, uh, years ago, I started an open mic and write uh, reading series in Michigan. Um, that was when my, when my checkbook first came out, I was looking for a venue for a reading. And um, I found that new businesses or new organizations are often more open to hosting events like that because they're looking to branch out and build community. Um, so I hooked up with a coffee house slash nonprofit um, and started a reading series and open mic slash open mic series there. And that was a really awesome way to meet local writers and just have that sense of community. I definitely had feelings of imposter sy syndrome doing that. Like I'm no expert, I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, it definitely was worth it to try to push back against that um, doubtful voice and, and just do it and you learn by doing it. So I definitely encourage anybody who wants to create a creative community. Um, if you can't find what you're looking for already in existence, just go ahead and do it yourself. You can do it. I love that you did that. Um, you are like a community, you are, cause you do other things too. I can think of some things I know that you do. Oh, right, I left off the monthly group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some members here. 
Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so I will go next. So the I had three, two things, and then I just thought of one more. I'll add um, one of my favorite kind of self-made communities is super informal, which is this thing I talked about last time we met, which is just, I call it crowdsourcing. But when I have a story that I've already read to my reading group, it's, it's in a pretty, in my writing group, I've already gone through it with them. It's in pretty good shape, especially this works well with shorter pieces. I'll just put it out on my social network um, more. I use Facebook more because those are people I actually know in the world as opposed to Twitter. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be quite that brave, but um, I will offer it out and say, hey, would anyone like to read this? And sometimes I'll ask a specific question. Like if I have a story that for instance, involves like law, I'm like, is there someone who knows about law, like a paralegal or a lawyer who would want to read this or someone from this place? Because I know that I need someone who might bring that expertise to it. But sometimes I'll just do it very openly. And I've been doing this for quite a number of years. I don't know how I began doing this, but I have certain people who've read things over time. And these are people that maybe I, someone I knew in high school or college that just has taken it up and is a, I found some really good readers this way. One thing I would say is that it's really nice when you're reading to have that sense of back and forth, but some of these people aren't writers, so they're not necessarily wanting me to read their thing, but it's interesting to them to be involved in this process. And with that kind of thing, you're kind of putting your stuff out into the ether and you never know. Sometimes you'll get back like a very, very thoughtful, long thing and you might get back, oh, I really like that, you know, or Eh, or maybe nothing. And that's all fine. But it's an interesting way to create this kind of buy-in. I think for the my most recent collection with a novella, I had several people in this community that read parts of that in early drafts and gave feedback and gave ideas that were really meaningful. And I feel like I feel connected to them. They feel connected to the work and to me. And so it creates a sense of community. So that's a really informal way to think about community. Um, another thing is I had this longtime writing group that I really loved, but in the last couple of years, I was thinking, I really want to have a writing group that is, um, that is a space for uh, BIPOC people. I really think that would be important to me and especially women. So sometimes you want a group that I think it's really nice to have a really broad group. So my first group is like literally like anyone who says they will read it, I pretty much will give it to them. And then this, uh, and then I have this medium group, which, which are friends that I relate to and I've had this long-term relationship with. And then I wanted a group that really reflected me in these specific ways. So I kind of reached out and found a group of people and we've been meeting for the last year or so. And it's really nice to have that as well. So sometimes you want a group that reflects you in a specific way. And you might not get that in a group that's pre-existing and that can be really nice. Um, so that's another thing I would say is really cool. The last one is in a community that I created, but that Shannon and I have both been part of, but uh, another writer created um, when our another author who was also a bookseller created a debut author kind of Slack channel, a group online that is kind of sprawling and there's a lot of people in it and it's kind of gained, um, you know, people are kind of constantly coming in and out of it as they're having that debut book. But I have found for me that community, especially in the early stages of thinking about becoming an author, having a book, doing edits, designing a cover, figuring out all these things that were really novel to the experience of a first book and that I didn't really have a lot of people around me that were going through that experience was really helpful. So this was a kind of almost like a Slack group where you could put out the questions, but then also meeting online uh, virtually once a month around a topic that people cared about. You could like kind of build relationship one-on-one -on -one and communicate with one another as well. So it has all these components to it. And I thought that was really um, an interesting, another kind of community that you could kind of create online. So that's, those are my mine. There's an interesting through line that I'm noticing with, with both of you there is that there, there's a degree to which we have to be willing to put ourselves out there and be, be kind of extroverted and kind of like a, a just more outgoing than I think comes naturally to a lot of writers. I think a lot of writers are introverts <laughs> or, you know, they have a little bit of the homebody in them. And that's why we're pretty content to be like, I'm going to spend my, my time sitting at a computer or in a coffee shop with pen and paper and writing. And it's a kind of, you know, it's that solitary activity and 
putting yourself out there to start growing a community like that can can be a little intimidating. But um, I've found that because so many writers are so introverted, they're always really grateful when someone <laughs> is willing to put themselves out there, either to approach them for a writing group or um, one of the things that I will do when I'm at, at conferences is I will I will make a point of trying to connect one on one with people that I meet in various workshops. Um, I, you know, and I, I'm, I don't mind making that first like getting to know you move and you will connect with everyone, you know, you'll, whether you're at a workshop or, you know, inviting people to a, to a writing group, some people will stick around and some people won't. Um, I like to add when I'm at a conference, I like to ask a really neutral question, like, where are you in your writing journey? Um, because at conferences, you will get people who are just readers. You will get people who are um, writers planning to publish, but not there yet. Writers who are agented, but not published. Writers who are on submission, who have written just their debut book, who have written entire series. Like you don't know who you're gonna be talking to. Um, and you have to be a little, you have to be willing to be a little bit outgoing, but which can be intimidating. But I think other people are always really grateful when there's a writer who makes the first move. <laughs> which I'm sure you found Shannon like I think you get so much interest in your writer groups whenever you solicit people's interest but they they're not the ones doing it so they're really glad that someone else is and I've found at at workshops that people are always so glad when someone takes the initiative to talk to them and especially at events like that where um, it, it can feel a little bit like you're on the outside, like if this is your first time at that conference, you can get this sense of like, oh, everyone else here knows each other and they all have someone to sit and eat with at the meals or go to the evening events with. Um, but most people come to those things solo. Most people, some people might come with a friend or two, but most people come by themselves and you can really make great connections. The last conference that I went to pre-pandemic, um, I connected with a really great little group, um, probably about three or probably four other people. I think three of them are, I'm still in touch with. And we don't necessarily swap um, work for feedback, but we spend a lot of time trying to support each other in other ways. Like if someone has a book coming out, um, you know, we all buy each other's works. We'll all cheerlead each other. We'll all, you know, shout about what each other are doing on social media. And I think that kind of that kind of support is as valuable as someone that you're swapping work with. I think you really need both of those kinds of things. Um, yes. Yeah, Can I say one quick thing? I see a question yeah. in the chat, but I have one quick thing um, that I think is really interesting is that we, you talked about Catherine, about how a lot of writers are introverts and shy. And I think one thing I loved particularly about that debut author um, Slack, but all these communities is that often other people have the same vulnerabilities as you do. And those communities aren't generally, in my experience, people boasting about everything that's working right, but also commiserating and e expressing those vulnerabilities. And it's so much easier to see and to understand that when you're looking at someone else and to understand that, yes, of course, it's vulnerable to make art and put it into the world, but also it's worthwhile, or I really like what you're doing, or I think this, you should, you know, there's a worth, there's, there's a value to trying um, when you see it in someone else and that can be really helpful to you and how you relate to your own self and what you're making. So I think that's I, really cool. I love those debut groups when I was having my debut year also. Everyone is so supportive. And like you said, everyone's dealing with the same fears and worries and insecurities and questions about what my publisher said this and what does that mean? I don't know because no one knows because it's everyone's first time. So it's, it's really like you said, it's, it reminds you that it's okay to have all those feelings yourself when you have the chance to respond generously to them in someone else. Um, so I've got a few questions that I'm gonna throw at Shannon and Jocelyn here, um, but I'm seeing some start to pop up in the chat also. So if anyone else has, in, anyone in the audience has questions that they've had for us, um, put them in the chat or the Q&A box and I will throw those in there also. So I'm gonna start out from Jen um, asking, can you mention some names of conferences or how to find out about them? Um, so it's okay, since I was already talking about conferences, I'll start, but um, Shannon and Jocelyn, if you wanna chime in at any point do. Um, there are some, I think once you start to um, sort of participate in a writer, writer's communities, whether in person or online, people will start mentioning conferences or workshops that they've gone to or that they're interested in. So you can find out names like just by word of mouth. Um, there's lots of big ones. Um, 
I, I feel I, I would try and listen, but they're also, there's really, really big ones. Like there's the writers, um, I think it's the writer's digest workshop up in, in New York or thriller fest. Um, you know, there's, there's ones on East coast, ones on left co West coast. Um, there, there, it's, it's, it, it feels impossible to list them because there's so many. And a lot of them are either big, broad ones or very specific by genre. So if you're curious and you're trying to find something, um, and some of them are even specific by state, like uh, RavenCon in Virginia is a specific Virginia sci-fi and fantasy <laughs> conference. Um, so they can get really, really hyper-local and specific by genre, or they can be big um, national conferences. So I would, one of the best ways to do it is to, um, to Google. Like if you're looking for something, just type in, you know, uh, West Coast, uh, liter liter literary fiction conference, and you'll see all sorts of things pop up, and you can you know find them that way. Um, a lot of them are virtual right now. <laughs> uh, 2020 was a year that a lot of them didn't happen, and now then 2021 things are moving virtual, and then they might be moving um, more in person next year. We'll see how that works out. Um, but I think Google's honestly probably the best way to find something, or word of mouth, because there's so many out there, um, and you can get really specific about where you're willing to travel to or what kind of genre you're looking for. Either I would, add about I'm just gonna piggyback. I love, I would definitely say Google is your best friend with conferences. Um, and I think also conferences tend to be, you know, panel, they can be also related to you as a reader, as a writer, you know, there's all these different kinds of ways. And then there's also just workshops, which are not conferences, but they have some of the same components where you're in a class or you're in a group and you're critiquing work, but then you also may have agents come or you may have um, writers giving, the, the teachers giving, um, you know, lectures about craft and so forth. So you kind of can hone in on what you want. I would mention uh, the Virginia Festival of the Book, which is here every March, which is wonderful and um, has components for writers as and a lot of components for readers as well, which if you're a reader, if you're a writer, you're also a reader of, you know, and really good way to um, just hear voices, hear people speaking about their work. And the James River Writer Conference, which is in Richmond, which I've gone to a couple times, is another nearby one that's pretty easy to get to. Um, and they often have, I think I tried to, I did it my first agent pitch at one of those where you go and like sweat a lot and then try to tell someone picture things <laughs> to a stranger, but it's really good practice and really interesting. And um, one more is I would mention a Suwannee conference, um, which is, I think that's more of a workshop. I haven't actually, I was supposed to go during the pandemic and then it was a virtual, so they put it off for a year. And then, um, and then I sold my book and then it was too crazy to go the next year. So, uh, but it's a really prestigious one as well that's in this area. Shannon, I see you, did you put some in that? I feel like you've made to put some really good resources in the chat. Yeah, and I'm so glad that, um, this, that Jen asked this question because there were a bunch that I thought of that I hadn't previously put into our list of resources. Um, so three that I would add, one is AWP, which I haven't been to before, but I know it serves uh, writers and writing instructors from um, a lot of different genres and all over the country. That's a big one. Um, I, the cost is a little higher. <laughs> That's why I haven't gone, but um, there's sort of an alternative um, called Small Fair, S-M-O-L, and that's a small press book fair and conference that um, was new this past spring, and they're going to do it again. Um, and that is all virtual, so that's a nice option for those who aren't local to or can't travel. Um, and it has a bunch of readings and panels and events and they give away a ton of free books. Um, and then another one that is pretty low cost, I'm, I was just looking it up, so I hope I'm getting this right. It's either Conversations and Connections or uh, Writers Connect Conference. There are two yearly conferences that the Barrel House Literary Magazine puts on. Um, one I believe is in Pennsylvania, but one is in Northern Virginia, I believe in Arlington. And I went to that a few years ago. Um, and that was a really awesome uh, conference to go to because it was low cost and uh, you got a book and a lit mag subscription with your ticket. 
Um, and you also could do this speed dating with editors. So you could actually bring your work and then talk to editors of different literary magazines. For, so for those who are interested in submitting work to literary journals and magazines, um, that's a really awesome opportunity to get feedback directly from um, editors and just meet other writers. So that was a good one. Uh, yes, I think the, the speed dating thing with editors, a lot of conferences will have things like that. Um, Jocelyn mentioned this a little bit too in passing that um, a, in addition to workshops and events, a lot of conferences will have things where you can get feedback from publishing professionals, um, either by showing your work to editors or by um, essentially giving your, your query, your pitch to agents. Um, you can sign up for, for slots like that. And it's just, those are those can be really valuable opportunities either um, for like, making those connections with people. Like even if, you know, an agent doesn't say like, oh yes, I want to sign you on the spot, which doesn't like, don't, don't necessarily hope for that to happen because that's not really what they're doing there. Um, but you can make those, you can make those really good connections. Like Jocelyn was saying about the person who is scouting her um, at her, at one of her workshops. Um, you can, that, that's a really great way to broaden your community and meet actual publishing professionals who can give you a lot of insight into the industry and really support you in your work. Um, and also to get feedback on your work directly and learn about the different parts of the process because you don't really, learning about querying while you're querying is kind of terrifying, but learning it, learning about it and getting feedback at a conference is I mean, it's still it's still terrifying, but it's a little less it's a little lower pressure than sending out your query into the world and hoping that someone responds to it. Um, so those are really other you know other kinds of communities that you can you can find there. Um, can I say one super quick thing, Catherine, yeah. before we go on? Um, also, it's really a one thing I would recommend or that I found to be useful is don't always look to the person that you feel like is above you or ahead of you to be your community. I think a lot of times everyone's tracking for the same for that for the editor or for the agent and their or the teacher who's published author that you respect. The people who are next to you are going to be uh, the person beside you who's also in you know coming to the conference could very well be the person that's going to be the most useful resource to you. And it's probably going to be much more open and not feel like that pressure to accommodate you. So that community to the side, I found to be just invaluable and really important. Absolutely. And I would say that a lot of times, I think those are the people that you can feel the, the most personal connection with, because you're all kind of in the same boat together. Um, and you can, you can really give each other a lot of valuable support and, and just, you know, actually make friends that way, rather than someone who's like, there's a terrifying, intimidating agent that you're trying to impress. Not that that's not a good community to have, but like you said, all those all those different levels are really important. Um, oh, so we've got another question popped in. Did um, did three of you personally find your agents or editors at writers conferences? And if not, how did you find them, or did they find you? Um, so I'm going to give this to Jocelyn first <laughs> to answer because she has such a fascinating agent journey that I think is just it really shows how much this is a journey. Like you can't expect everything to just fall into place right away. Um, so Jocelyn, take it away. I've had all the, all the experiences. The first agent I had was I read aloud at Tin House way back in the day. Someone scouted me for their agent who was a New York agent. I ended up developing a piece with them, um, really dealing with this person who scouted me, but I had but the legitimate agent was my agent. They did submit the piece, but it didn't sell. Then, you know, time passed and I wrote a manuscript and kind of sought out an agent and kind of did the traditional query, writing letters, cold letters to people, talking to people I knew and saying, is there anyone that you might know who might be a good match for this, but not really knowing fancy enough people for that to work very well. Um, and ended up getting my second agent who, um, responded to a query. I think I had a, like a really tangential, um, someone who recommended me to, to her agent and then a junior agent in that firm ended up taking my piece. And that, we developed that piece and went out on submission. It did not actually find a home in the world. Um, and then for my last, um, for my current book, which actually did find a home, I, um, I had a 
I think this is a really big way that you can find representation, which is you kind of have a smaller success or you have something published or you have something in the world that generates a little bit of energy. And then you kind of like use that, leverage that into a little bit to finding the people, your people for this project. So for me, I um, had a story that did well, it got placed in Guernica and then it got Best American Short Stories. And then an editor from Best American reached out and said, I really like that story. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna do this project about Virginia stories. Do you know anyone who might be a good agent for this? So she gave me like three names and kind of told them, oh, I really like this story. And so one of those people ultimately became the agent for this project. Um, so you're always, you know, making things. I think if you just focus on the idea that you're making things and you're trying to make the most interesting things and then finding people who are excited about the kinds of things you're making, it, it makes it more fun and more interesting. Yeah, having, making those personal connections, I think, like you said, you, you're the one who, who took the initiative to, to reach out to that editor and say, do you know anyone? Um, and you know, not necessarily know, knowing that like, oh, this person can definitely connect me to someone like this is my in, but, you know, saying like, this is a, this is a connection I have. This is someone in my community. Who do you know? <laughs> like that's, mm -hmm. that's really valuable. Shannon, what about you? Do you want to say a little, little bit about finding your agent? Yeah. So my agent found me. Um, which I did not expect to happen, but he read a story that I published on the online journal Maudlin House um, and reached out to me via email. Uh, this had happened before with another agent uh, based on a piece I had published in a different journal um, who I sent my novel to and then never heard from her again. So I didn't get too excited initially, um, but I sent him, he, you know, he asked, are you working on anything book length? And I said, you know, I, I already have a book coming out, um, but I told him about my, my ideas that I was working on and planning on working on next. Um, so I sent him my manuscript for the book Whimsy, which I published this past uh, March. And um, he actually signed me just based upon that, even though I had just signed the contract with an indie press. So I brokered that deal myself um, just like a couple days before he reached out to me. Um, so that I think, I think both parts of that are not necessarily the norm. Because, you know, usually an agent will sign you based upon a book that they intend to sell pretty soon after, unless they're an agent that's looking for like long term um, relationships with their clients and selling multiple books. So I've been with my agent for over a year now, um, and he's been really great with giving me feedback and helping me through several drafts of working on a novel Um but yeah, he, we haven't sold anything yet, but I did just send him what I think might be the last draft. So we'll put that out on submission, hopefully soon. <laughs> um, that's very exciting. Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations. That's awesome. Thanks. We'll see. Yeah. Cool. I, I connected with my agent just through a cold query. Um, I did the very standard send out queries to rounds of agents. Um, so I will say sort of related to the, the initial question, um, I actually know far more writers who have found their agents either through, like with Jocelyn and Shannon said, um, specific work that the agent saw out in the world and was interested in or um, through cold querying, just like sending your pitch to an agent following all of the guidelines on their website. Um, then people who have connected with them through writers conferences. I think I know one person who has who found their agent through one of those pitch sessions at a conference. I think those sort of sessions are more valuable for the feedback element um, and for just getting to know people in the industry. I think they're, they're more of a, it's, it's, for most writers, I think they're more of a stepping stone and more of a way to develop your craft and to build your community than they are like, this is a surefire way to get an agent. Um, it looks like we're really running down on time, but I wanted to throw one question at you, Jocelyn and Shannon, since I think this is one that a lot of people struggle with. And it's, how do you know when you're ready to share your writing with others? Do you want to, I, I don't know. Do you want to go, Shannon? I don't know. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm trying to remember when I took that jump. Um, I mean, I shared writing, I shared work with 
other people in, I took one writing class in college, one like creative writing class, maybe a couple. Um, so that I guess was forced upon me to get the grade. But <laughs> um, after that, I, I didn't share any writing again with anybody for several years until I went to um, some writing uh, panels kind of like this at my local library at the time in Ann Arbor. Um, and that kind of inspired me enough to get the courage to seek out other readers and, and try to share my writing um, because it is a really intimidating and scary process. Um, but of course, you know, if, you, if you're just starting out, it's great to ask friends or people who you know will be kind so that it doesn't crush your soul and discourage you too much. Yeah. I was just gonna add to that and just say that um, it's really good to know what you want. If you just want like someone to read it and just enjoy it and not really give you feedback, that's totally reasonable. And that's, you can let people know what you need and tailor, you know, what you're doing you can find someone that could be like just a friend. I just want you to see what I read. I made this thing. I'm really proud of it. But if you want to figure out how to change it or hone it, then you still want a trusted person. You still don't want someone's going to like, you know, take you down, but you, but that's a different level. That's just a different kind of thing. So I think even within my 10 year writing group, we often say, where are you and what do you want? So sometimes you'll share something really early and you'll say, I don't know what this is. I'm just curious what you all see and the potential of it. I'm really open. I don't know. I just wrote a draft of this. And sometimes you'll say, they'll know, well, they'll usually know <laughs> I've been working on this novel forever. It's driving me crazy. I'm trying to figure out this. You can, you can ask for what you want and you can also decide which feedback you're going to um, take as working feedback. You, your job is not to hear everything everyone says about your work and then try to chase what they're saying, because that will not make a better piece. As Shannon, I think said earlier, different people will tell you very dramatically different things. So you have to evaluate, does that sound right to me? Is that pushing it in the direction that I want to go in? Is that just not useful to me? Is that just someone they brought that to it? And that's not even what the piece is. So it's really important to have a sense of yourself and your intention before you share. Yeah. And I think you can like Jocelyn was saying, you can ask specifically for what you need and for what you're looking for. Like you don't have to hope that people will figure it out. Um, you can say, I need this kind of feedback. I'm struggling with this specific problem. Um, I think it took me a long time to start sharing my writing. I didn't really seek feedback or, or critique from anyone um, for a long time until I was thinking like, this is something that I, I am going to want to try and get published. And I've made it as good as I can on my own. Now I need an outside perspective. And I think with most pieces, if you're trying to get them published, you will hit that point where the, this, is, this is as far as I can take this right now. I need someone else to jumpstart the next round of what I can do for this. And you don't necessarily know if you're in a writer's group, who is going to give you that particular comment or that idea that's going to really help you reach that next level with it. Um, which is why I think it's really valuable to have readers and critique partners or, you know, just not even critique partners, but just readers, people who read your work, who come from a variety of backgrounds. You know, they don't necessarily have to write in the same genre as you. They don't even necessarily have to be writers. They could just be really enthusiastic readers, but you want people who are willing to, um, to value your work and to say like, I want to, I see that this is something important to you and I'm invested in you as a person. So I'm going to give you my, my best kind of feedback rather than, you know, if you someone, it's, it's very different from like someone who's a professional reviewer. They're not invested in the, the person that they're reviewing. They're doing that as a job. So they're not necessarily giving critique in order to help you improve. They're giving just their opinion of it. Um, but so what you want to find with people you're sharing work with is that they're really invested in helping you improve and grow or just I in enjoying your work. I was going to say like, it's, it's actually a real gift to have someone tear your piece apart in a loving way, whether you can see that they're really paying attention to what you're mm -hmm. doing and they're noticing things in it and they're taking every word seriously. It's like a, they're spending time and care in it. And that usually comes off in a different way. than, <laughs> like you said, just someone who's 
reviewing it and this is good or this is bad or someone reading your work that way isn't a judgment it's a it's a conversation with your piece that where they're taking it very seriously i think yeah, we're kind of out of time and i think that's a really yeah. nice place to end that's a really lovely thought thank you so much that was fantastic shannon jocelyn Catherine, thank you for being here with us this evening um shannon i don't know if we can update or if we could compile all the resources we discussed. I was trying to keep up. I might have missed some, and maybe I could send out an email to all the registrants um, in the next few days. Um, so thank you so much for being with us. Continued success with the writing. Um, some wonderful resources here. Uh, everybody, thank you for attending. I'm going to put a little link into the chat box. If you could just take two minutes of your time to fill, fill that out, um, it would be much appreciated. Um, this just helps us do planning, let us know what you liked about this program, let us know what you'd like to see in the future, um, it helps us shape our planning. Um, it's a lot of help for us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully we can do something like this again, maybe in person in the near future. So Shannon, Jocelyn, Athen, thank you once again. And good night. Everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody.